Welcome to Hit the Books, the only weekly realistic fantasy booking podcast in the world, hosted by us. Welcome to Season 3, baby! This is the Battle of the Brand season. I am your host, Ryan19. With me, as always, is my fellow co-host, the man of a thousand nicknames, Mikey Manfredi. Mikey, how are you doing, bud? Smack down, smack down, smack down. Hey, Lucha House Party on my roster. (laughs) Blue brand, blue brand. Um... (laughs) Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on season three. Thank you, Mikey, for for handling SmackDown. I'm handling Raw, which means I'm going to crush you. Um, but we literally America <laughs> Bischoff, baby. So by the time you're hearing this, it's Friday. But we literally are recording this at what one forty three on on Wednesday. Yep, one forty three on a Wednesday afternoon. If you're listening to this, you already know that like. Uh, WWE is going to cut and furlough a bunch of their talent, you know, behind the st- behind the scenes people. Um, and we are, I, we literally we we're about to start recording, and then it was like, oh, five people have just been cut from the roster, and they were like, well, let's start recording, Mikey. Let's talk so, about this shit, though. <laughs> I'm still stunned. We, we we lost some roster members, both of us. Yes. Uh, I have I have lost. Uh, Kurt Hawkins, mm-hmm. and I have lost Drake Maverick. Yes, uh, NXT in our universe, EC3, Leo Rush gone, and Carl Anderson. He was on one half of Carlos and Anderson. Carl Anderson's gone. Uh, you know, and good thing not... we just took the belt off of them, huh? Yeah, and we're not just and we're not just talking like gone from our universe. They're 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 gone. They're no longer in WWE. They have come to the terms of the lease. They have not been furloughed. Uh, based on what I read. Uh, there some roster is getting cut, some roster is getting furloughed. The difference being that some are just getting let go and can do their own thing. Furloughed mean that they're going to be temporarily laid off in hopes that when this is all over, they'll bring them back. There is potential they aren't, <laughs> but I guess you know, and you know, potential that more people get cut. But it's nasty. WWE is doing all this stuff for cost saving measures. So yeah, Maverick, Hawkins, Anderson, EC3, Leo Rush, Mikey. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> what are you? Oh it, my god! Wrestling is in a dangerous place right now, and it's terrifying. If the big multi-billion-dollar company is making these cuts, yeah, that's when I'm starting to get nervous. That's very much true. Uh, that a uh, huge. I mean, we haven't heard we haven't heard anything about AEW or anything. Um, yeah. I haven't heard anything about New Japan, Ring of Honor. I, literally, WWE is the only company I've heard that are doing this for cost-saving measures. I, I mean, it's wild. Unless, yeah, unless Ring of Honor and all those other companies aren't saying anything, but I haven't heard anything. Uh, any, any? <laughs> I don't even know how to start the show because I'm just like stunned by all of this. Maybe not the great, greatest way to start a season three. But you know this. Yeah, is... Uh, yeah, this is wild. Like, I, like we're we're kind of we're kind of stunned a little bit because we were literally about to record and then we all of a sudden had to cut people from our roster. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Drake Maverick got it, it. Literally, he was announced for the cruiserweight title tournament. What like last weekend or last Wednesday last week? Now he's no longer with WWE. That is how quick of a turnaround everything's happening for WWE. Carl Anderson, you you. What's the thing on Carl Anderson you just read? Uh, Carl Anderson just signed a five year deal, also, and he just got released. <laughs> he was gonna be in WWE for the next five years, and now he's gone. I don't know what's. And now he's not anymore. I don't know what's like, happening how, with Luke Gallows. Um, I guess they're keeping him around. My guess, I, I I'm theorizing that like maybe Gallows is still is maybe like injured or something. Not still, but maybe like injured or something. It's either that WWE sees value in Luke Gallows to have them around, or conversely, he's like injured and they want to keep him on until he can, you know, pay for the hospital and he's, and he's healed, and then they cut him. Which that's happened in the past for like plenty of times. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. This is wild. Uh, and then Leo Rush EC3. Uh, EC3 obviously is someone that 
has not been really used well in WWE. A lot of people... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Let me... Hold on. <laughs> uh, Mikey, talk about... Best, okay, while I'm looking this up real quick, because I need to double-check my findings, but uh, while I'm looking this up real quick, can you just talk to me about what are some fave memories of all these guys? Well, I, I don't really have that many of EC3, but I will... I, I uh, For me, EC3... Yes, just I should that. say, e- <laughs> favorite memories in WWE. <laughs> well, I mean, NXT, uh, EC3 had that amazing ladder match... I, which I think wasn't it like his debut match or something like it was why it was it was like one of his first matches in NXT. I believe that's correct. That sounds right. And he had the big ladder match for the North America title, which was an awesome, awesome match, and it was really great. I gave that match five. And of stars. course, of I course, who could who could forget the the, the so gifable moment of EC3 with the cup at the party? Oh yeah, just like oh yeah, so so desperately sad just with the cup in his hand just like yes party in his in his gear for like no reason <laughs> uh i mean oc had a great run i i was really i was start i was actually really starting to get into them after that boneyard match and it sucks that they're split now all of a sudden especially after you sign that five-year deal um uh, i'm so what i'm looking up right now is because twitter is talking about it and i literally can't find a link suggesting it Oh, well, there's, there's from John Pollock, so I think it's official, because John Pollock is usually one that is fairly accurate, that Luke Gallows has been added to that list. Oh, okay. He 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 was he did not get added to the list, and it was an accident, I'm guessing, so Gallows is also gone. So the entirety of OC uh, is gone, for, except for AJ, I guess. Yes, so, yeah, I, I, of course they're going to keep AJ. That man, that man prints money. Um, wow. Okay, so Gallows and Anderson are gone. <sighs> <laughs> oh my god okay um okay uh yeah favorite memories of these guys in WWE. uh drake maverick uh, i i really like drake maverick as the 205 live general mm-hmm. manager he used to be uh, he used to, he used to be shifted. cool yeah i liked him and then they did the whole aop manager for instance for a little mm-hmm. bit and then he did the 24 7 title hunt which was kind of fun kind of weird but kind of fun yeah um, good bro- good brothers. Uh, just main evented a WrestleMania against the Undertaker mm-hmm. in a way. Uh, <laughs> I guess they've officially been buried. <laughs> Hawkins and Ryder had that big WrestleMania uh, moment a couple years ago when they won the uh the tag oh. titles against the Revival. Uh, hold the presses. I- I'm seeing more names. Sh- according to Sh- <laughs> this is all breaking news to us folks, and maybe not you, but according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com, he is also saying that Eric Young has also been. This released. is wild. This needs to stop because I'm. <laughs> we're, this needs to stop. We're gonna have no roster. The roster is just getting. T- <laughs> well, there goes Eric Young. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my- we haven't even started like officially like started talking about what the show is, what we're doing. We're just like trying to get. At this point, it. I think we just get into that. And then whatever cuts be made, next well, week we'll, we'll yeah, next out. week we'll address whatever cuts to be made, because we we can't just keep doing this live, or else we're never gonna we're never gonna get to it. <laughs> the list is yeah. gonna get bigger. So I think I think for now we leave it be, and then next week we'll address it. We'll address everything <laughs> all together at once, and we'll figure this it all is out. Crazy! Oh man! <laughs> yeah, who knows who else is gonna get cut? A uh, bunch of jobbers eventually leaving. It was wild. Wow. Yeah. Let's let's get into the show. What we are. Uh. Yeah. Welcome to season three of Hit the Books. Um. If you if you do not know, if you're joining us for the first time ever, uh, this is a weird moment for us to to start. But I'm glad you stuck with us to hear our immediate responses to everything that's happening in the world. Um. So. Yeah, we're season three. We decided, Mikey and I have been booking SmackDown every single week for the past one and a half years or so. Just about. Um, and we have, you know, we've decided, you know what, we're going to take a stab at it. Season three, we're splitting it up. SmackDown versus Raw. Raw versus SmackDown. Oh, yeah. Mikey is handling SmackDown. I am handling Raw. We are going to, we've essentially booking our own versions of these shows. And we're here to present them. So it's 
and by present them literally it's like mikey and i are, are trying to do this sort of like secret stand santa present does that make sense we're trying to do it like that that secret santa present style where we don't we're not, we don't want to we don't want the other person to know what we're doing but we want to surprise them when we do the show so that's so so these ge- reactions to each other's cards are going to be genuine because I have no idea what Mikey has in store. I know and I have no idea what Ryan has in store. We're both just in in the air here. Yeah, we're we're in the air tonight, as it were. Um, well, no, this is it's, it's weird. It's weird <laughs> that we don't know. It's it's weird that we don't know each other's cards ahead of time. Usually we we have it all booked and planned by now, but it's it, it'll be it'll be interesting surprising each other. I think. Yeah, I'm I'm interested to see uh, where this keeps going. Oh my god, this uh, they just keep. They keep Ryan, turn off the list. news for now. Turn they, it off. They keep updating the list. Um, Shut it off for now. Yeah. Look at the list after. Mikey, we'll get a can, comprehensive list next week, and we'll talk about all the releases. Uh, Mikey, can you can you take the reins for the show for a second? <laughs> Here, I'm gonna hand you the reins. Thank you. I'll talk, take the ring. Yeah, talk about this for a second. I'm just going to put, put myself together. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, like like we said, I'll be taking SmackDown this week, uh, and Ryan will be taking Raw this week. And I I don't know. How about we jump right into the right into it? <sighs> <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn off Twitter and get back to it later. Let's jump right into it. I'll start off with my show opener for... So SmackDown. Okay, yeah. Okay, right, okay. Right. Episode one of We're season three. Hit the episode book, SmackDown. One. Here we go. Mikey, the first Woo! episode of Mikey only SmackDown. Here we go. Yes, I'm excited, folks. I am excited to see what Mikey has in store. I've again no idea what he's doing. I cannot stress it enough. Uh, and we'll talk about the randomizer and all that bullshit later. Mikey, <laughs> go for it. So our show opener is none other than our Universal Champion Randy Orton opens up SmackDown dressed in a suit, holding the red Universal title over his shoulder. And he says, now that your Universal Champion is on SmackDown, it might actually become a watchable show and class <laughs> up this jungle a little bit more. Should I Should I be offended? <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> and while we're on the subject of class, I decided the belt needs a little bit of an update to live up to the prestige of a champion such as myself. Orton snaps his fingers, and two men in suits roll out a podium with a velvet cloth over it to ringside. Orton rolls out of the ring and takes the cloth off, revealing the new blue Universal title belt. Orton drops the red belt on the ground and stomps on it, raises the new blue Universal title above his head, and heads to the back. So, just want to open up first episode of SmackDown after WrestleMania. Now that the Universal Championship is on SmackDown, give it that nice blue belt, make it SmackDown branded, and make it look awesome. I love it. I, I, I'm, but it's not only that. It's that you have like this heel suited up Randy Orton. Yes, this is that that this is a character choice I've decided for him. It's like you've you're you're teasing this like 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 business acumen Randy Orton, which I'm very interested. I'm very interested with that. Like, yeah, you haven't you haven't like get into it. Like, oh my god, that's interesting. Also, I miss suited up Randy. Yeah, well, I think, yes, I think suited up Randy was one of the best Randys. When he used to come out and he used to be like all like, oh, "I'm the best. I'm a real champion," and he would look all fancy. It was the best. It was great. Yeah, it. it what it was also like what last time he was really suited up was sort of like uh, probably like Evolution, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, Mikey, I did, I did maybe make a fib. I, okay, I didn't, I didn't get off Twitter. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> We can't. This cannot be the whole show. I know, I know. But I, if it makes you feel better, I cut a roster member for your roster. Who did you cut? Heath Slater. Okay. That, oh, yikes! <laughs> oh, no three no MB reunion. We'll never forget it. He'll never get the title now. It's over. Uh, it just it just keeps updating. I really do get off Twitter. <laughs> Yes, you do. I, okay, talking about your booking. I like it. I like. It. I think that was a great way to switch to the blue roster thing. And yeah, it is a good tease of like this new character change of Randy Orton. I'm interested to see where you go with him. Are you doing? Are we doing the rest of your show, and then we'll do the rest of my, and then we'll do my show? That probably makes the most sense. I was, right? I was thinking we, we, uh, we kind of just alternate. Unless you want to meet, you, know, you want me to book, book my whole SmackDown, and then you book your whole Raw for for, and Ram- we'll do a quick rundown later. Yeah, for, yes, I think for poll. For randomizing poll voting sake, for the audience's sake, I think it would be easier for them to know what was all on SmackDown and then what was all on Raw. 
Do not confuse okay. the two shows. All right, I'll I'll continue booking my show then. Yes, please. Match number one on SmackDown. The first match back after WrestleMania. Keith Slater versus Eric Young. Oh boy. <laughs> we have Braun Strowman versus the Colognes in a handicap match, in which Braun Strowman absolutely squashes the Colognes. Of course. Uh, just just bringing back Monster Braun Strowman, trying to trying to build them up again after uh, all the weird comedy and Miz stuff we had with him. Just trying to build him up as this big monster again. So I put him in a match with the Colognes just to get things a rolling. Okay, yeah, you're get, getting the monster among men back and running, back up and mm-hmm. what what is he now in WWE? He's these hands. With that, no, but he's like he has a, he has a new shirt that was like. Braun train or the Strowman train or something. It says, "Hold on, <laughs> it's what is it? It's like Strowman train." <laughs> you, we're going, we're going back in time to the Monster Among Men because fucking... yeah, we're going back in time to the Monster Among Men because that was his best gimmick. I I don't know what this train shirt is. I can't find it anywhere <laughs> right now. I don't know. I don't feel like looking. That's fair. I, I remember it was right. like something about that. Okay, I like that. Okay, you're getting a little bit of uh, Braun. Is Braun being a? I guess. Is he being a heel? I guess against the clones, it's hard to tell. But is you doing? Braun yeah, he's he's just he's just right right now. He he doesn't really have heel or face. He's kind of just destroying the clones. He's Braun. <laughs> yeah, he's Braun. He's Braun Strowman. It, 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 yet, yeah, wait and see. <laughs> All right. So after Braun Strowman's decimation of the clones, we cut to a backstage interview with none other than our brand new SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Heavy Machinery. Hey-o. We an interview backstage with their brand new titles. They are being asked how it feels to be the champions. Tucker says that they have been celebrating nonstop since WrestleMania, and they're still on the high of victory. So what we're going to do is issue an open challenge to any tag team on SmackDown roster who wants a piece of the blue-collar champions. Otis grabs the mic and says that Heavy Machinery are going to be fighting champions and show that just because they have the titles, it doesn't mean they're going to be slowing down anytime soon. So if you want to challenge us for the titles, meet us in the main event tonight. And they leave. Whoa, is that, wait, are we saying, are you saying a, there's a title match tonight? SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships on the line tonight. Whoa. At, on our main event. Open challenge. Open challenge. I love an open challenge. It's always good. It makes heavy, it makes heavy machinery look like they're, they're going to be defending these titles a lot. They, they're really working for them. I think it's going to get the people on their side and it's going to make, it's going to make them look great. Now, uh, I do have the one question. Are they blue collar or are they gold collar? <laughs> are they gold wasted? Well, the blue collar well, gold wasted. No, no, they're still they're still blue they're blue collar, yeah, blue collar gold wasted. They, <laughs> they 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 they're blue collar cuz they worked for it, but they got they got the they got the gold on them. Are they are I they guess be- the silver? They're blue collar, gold wasted, beer wasted. <laughs> steak steak weighted. Steak steak weighted, gold wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh All right, my gosh. and af- oh. after our backstage interview, we have a women's match between Dana Brooke and Charlotte Flair, in which Charlotte Flair takes home the victory. Queen is back on SmackDown. Uh-huh. Queen wants to reign. She's going to start taking people down. Who's of your, course, who's your women's champion again? It's uh, the I mean, women's champion right now is Asuka. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So we got Charlotte Flair versus Dana Brooke. Just Charlotte Flair making the name, just being like, "I'm back on SmackDown, bitches. The Queen is here." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bow down. I yeah, like it. I like that stuff. After that, we have something I'm very excited for. We have a video package. We have it's a One Nation video package. So, One Nation is sitting in a dark room. Cruz and Tazawa are standing on either side of an empty chair. Cruz puts a hand on the chair and says, "Ali, we were fools to trust you. You gave us promises of victory, told us we would be loved, adored, that they would never forget us. But who were you to talk?" The biggest loser on the biggest loser on SmackDown, constantly forgotten about, and most of all, a coward. Well, okay. First, first off, in Mustafa Ali's defense, he did lose all that weight, <laughs> so he is the biggest. <laughs> so Cruz steps up closer to the camera, and he says, "You blindsided us for what? Those people, the ones who forgot about you. We gave you a chance. We believed in you. You stabbed us in the back, and then all of a sudden." you hear the chair close <gasps> and Cruz steps to the side and shows Tazawa hold, holding the folded up chair. And he glares at the camera and says, now you pay. And it cuts to black. Whoa, oh my God. Oh my God. What a little promo segment. I video thought that was, a, I don't know why, but 
I wrote this yesterday, and I was like, this is the sickest fucking thing I've ever written. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. They're, out, they're, they're like, out for blood. <laughs> Holy shit. Mustafa Ali. They're mad. I, Ali stabbed him in the back. You, they're not happy open, about it. Wow. They're you out for revenge. Up SmackDown with, what is this, four heels? You're, pro- you're piping up. You're, you're showing the threats out here. I'm like, loving it. It's about to be five. <laughs> Give me five. Give me five. Because because our next match because our next match is Samoa Joe versus Jeff Hardy, in which Samoa Joe takes home the victory. Uh, and then after that, there, our segment is Joe cutting a promo in the ring, saying he's here to run down the roster of SmackDown, and that nothing and no one will get in his way, especially not a washed up has been like Mister Hardy over here. <laughs> I want the best of the best so I can give them a little lesson on who runs things around here now. Joe throws Joe like flips the mic at Jeff Hardy and walks oh my out. God. Oh my god. You're you're oh my god. Holy shit. Open it very heel yes, heavy. Yes, very heel but heavy. I'm... It it does it does get better. I pr- and in in this last this this last uh I guess this is probably the last like hour of SmackDown. It gets better. I really like. Sorry, go back to that promo for One Nation. Uh I really like that promo. It was a really a really good promo, Mikey. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate I, that. I, I I like that the the we we started One Nation and then you chose to turn. I'm saying you chose to turn Mustafa Ali heel. That's fair. And he became the leader of One Nation. And then like One Nation didn't like do anything. And mm-hmm. then we decided to have to turn. I think the randomizer said that we had to turn someone face right. So then we decided Mustafa yeah. Ali turned face back and, on back on yeah you know. One Nation yeah. And so. So now it's like we've that that faction of like yeah I'm gonna try to lead you guys, and you know turn heel and turn the dark. Now it's like no you suck. <laughs> they're they're turning. And, they're really they're turning on him. Yeah, I like it. I like One Nation. Oh my god, I like that. It's like it, you if you're coming and try to be you know, try to be a part of the group, you better succeed or. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They 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 want success from here on out. They're gonna be very stubborn about it because they. They got promises of grandeur from Gustav Ali being the leader, and he and they didn't really get much from it. So yeah. they're they're over it, and they're they're gonna make a name for themselves. I like it. I like it. And Samoa Joe and Samoa Joe talking up the talking up the world as well. I like it. Yeah, get, getting Samoa Joe in there, taking out a legend Jeff Hardy already, just really really cementing himself as a threat right off the bat. Mm-hmm. I like it. Let's keep let's keep that ball rolling. So next up, we have another women's match. We have Candice LeRae versus Mandy Rose, and Candice LeRae takes it home. Hey! Uh, and there's a post-match interview with Candice LeRae for the segment afterwards, saying she is very excited to make an impact here on SmackDown, and this win is the first step of many towards that goal. Hey, I like it. I like Candice LeRae. She's popping up, making her NX, uh, uh, SmackDown WWE main roster debut. Mm-hmm. A good job. And a match against Mandy Rose. Not, not, not a... Uh, an insignificant opponent, let's say. No, but and you could easily chalk up the Mandy Rose's loss is due to Sony Deville not being there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it sort of protects Mandy in a little little way. Definitely, but I like it. I like it. And now for our main event of the evening, yeah, baby, SmackDown. Oh, the yeah. SmackDown tag team titles are on the line. Oh yeah, Heavy Machinery comes to the ring and is waiting for their opponents. And who is it? None other than a debuting. Mustache Mountain. Whoa! Challenging for the SmackDown Tag Team titles right off the bat. Mustache Mountain are revealed to be the opponents of Heavy Machinery for the first open challenge. After the match, where Heavy Machinery does take home the victory and retains their titles, Heavy Machinery walk up to Mustache Mountain, help them up, and raise their hands in victory, and both teams stand tall as SmackDown comes to a close. Wow. Wow. Heavy, oh, you, heavy machinery gets the win over Mustache Mountain. Heavy machinery getting the win over Mustache Mountain and putting them over after the match because it was probably awesome. <laughs> I like it. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that card. Uh, ending on a, a nice note of a nice tag team title match with an NXT debut of Mustache Mountain. What does this mean for you know Mustache Mountain? Of course. There's always the potential of are you going to reunite the was it British strong style away for, or are you going to create the bruiser weights broser weights sorry yeah is it going to be the broser weights or is it going to be British strong style I don't know I'm, I got I have two two 
two weights here and I got to figure it out. I like it. I like, I like this. I like this a lot, Mikey. Um, yeah, that, that's SmackDown episode one. That's solid Mikey SmackDown. SmackDown episode one. Solid SmackDown. Very solid SmackDown. I like that a lot, Mikey. Uh, well, great job. Great job. Uh, if you like that audience, then uh, there will be a poll. Let's, I guess we'll talk about that here. Um, part of season three is that every single episode, you if you listen to the show, you can go vote. Go to Twitter, at Pod. There will be a poll pinned to the top of our Twitter page um, where you can vote on which uh, episode of SmackDown or Raw that you enjoyed the most. So, if you enjoyed SmackDown, go vote for that. Go for vote for Mikey right now. Why am I saying this before I vote for mine? Or not, I mean, <laughs> present mine? Maybe, hindsight, maybe not the best thing. But I'm going to talk about it now. Uh, and what that does is, for Season 3, is that the winner of this poll will be uh, able to use the randomizer on the other person. So, if Mikey, oh. if, for instance, if Mikey wins the poll, he's able to use the randomizer next week on me to really mess with me. The power, I feel it. Yeah, I I, I like it. I, I like that. I was a good SmackDown. Good SmackDown. Well, Thank let you. me uh, because because of all these real life firings, let me make a slight change to my to my show. Yikes! Uh, big old yikes! Um, let me make a slight change to the show. But before we get to the next matchup here, Mikey, I got a little PSA for all of you at home. We said we're not going to talk about it at the beginning much, but you know we still need to talk about it. And right here, I got a PSA right in front of me, right in front of me. Where's that paper? Right there it is. I want to go read it out for you. It's about COVID-19, better known as coronavirus. Uh, this virus has spread throughout the world. Symptoms of this respiratory disease may include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Um, these symptoms, they can show up 2 to 14 days after exposure. That's right. If you've been in contact with another person, they these symptoms might not show up 2 to 2 weeks after you've come in contact, after you come in exposure. So if you are experiencing these symptoms and have come in contact with or are in an area with an ongoing outbreak, please call a hotline and or consult a physician as soon as possible. Please clean and disinfect high-touch surfaces to limit the spread of this virus. For more information, please visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. Thanks so much, and let's get back to the matches. With SmackDown out of the way, Mikey, let's get into my booking of this week's episode, Season 3, Episode 1 of Monday Night Raw. And then, like, there'd be, like, music that's, like, not... I was going to do... I was, I was like, what is Monday Night Raw's theme music? And I was about to be like, da na na And I was like, nope, that's Sports Center. Nope. <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> no. Okay, so let's open up. Roman Reigns opens up Raw. Of course, the newly minted WWE champion, Roman Reigns. Uh, both of our respective champions opening up the shows. Mm-hmm. Roman says that he is glad, so very glad, that he's still here kind of weird saying that now uh (laughs) wrestlemania was probably one of the hardest contests he's ever had he's ever faced in a long while goldberg was no joke and brian daniel bryan we've had our differences in the past but what you do in the ring is nothing short of impeccable but now i am here standing with the wwe championship and then he like raises the title and whatnot Mm mm-hmm uh, Roman says that he is going to welcome all challengers. He's not going to be a champion that just hoards his own gold. Uh, I want to have a match every week. If you beat me, you get a shot at the title. It's simple as that. Uh, Love Roman, that. Roman says, in fact, there is one guy who really piqued his interest over on SmackDown. So, Keith Lee, if you want to go, dog, let's go. You and me, one-on-one, if you beat me, I'll get you a title shot. What do you Big say? Big call out. And then Roman leaves. And then we find out that tonight it's Roman Reigns versus Keith Lee. Surprise. Big call out from Roman Reigns to start off Raw. I love it. A big dog call out, if you I will. almost said to start off SmackDown. I wasn't. I, I had to change it at the last second out of my mouth. <laughs> the muscle memory is going to be like, oh, yeah. no. Uh, next up. What first, a big way to start off Raw. First love match it. on Raw is Lucha House Party. Uh, uh, let's just say uh, Grand Metal League and Lindsay Dorado. Okay. Okay. Where's where's Kalisto been? I think he's actually injured. Uh, versus uh, Bobby Lashley and Cesaro. Interesting pairing. Uh, with with Lana with them as well. Uh, and this is basically a squash match. Uh, Lashley and Cesaro destroy Lucha House Party. They are a uh, new tag team. Lashley, what's their name? Go. What's their tag team name? 
What's their tag team name? Uh, uh, LLC. Lana Lashley Cesaro. <laughs> I made that up off the spot, but hold on. Is that not bad? <laughs> it's not bad, but it's also not great. Okay, okay. There's time to improve. <laughs> you can do better. You can do better. I can do better, like- probably. Um, LLC. For... For but for something right off the top, the Lana maybe is like some like yeah the LLC or look, something. What you look fans listening? Anyone listening? When you're picking the best show, also tweet at us a good name for Lashley and Cesaro. <laughs> and if you're picking the best show, don't let the tag team name of LLC really be a determining factor for you. Keep in mind that it is temporary and something I made off in point nine seconds. Uh, next up is a segment. It is an announcement of the women's competitors in the Money in the Bank ladder match that's coming up. That's going to be our first pay per view coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, Mikey, you ready to hear who those competitors are? Yes, please. Uh, the competitors in the Money in the Bank ladder match is going to be former Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and Carmella. Okay. All right. Those are the women's competitor on the Raw side. Of course, you have SmackDown, which I, who, who knows? Who knows it could be? I guess only you. Uh, uh, then we have a backstage interview with Becky Lynch, and she's asked about her lengthy run as Raw Women's Champion and her first loss in months to the goddess Alexa Bliss. Becky Lynch says that what happened at, at WrestleMania was a sham. What Alexa Bliss Yikes. and Nia Jax did were, was, was, were horrendous. Was, were. But that won't stop the man. Nothing has stopped the man before. And Money in the Bank, she will climb that ladder to the top of the ring. Not Carmella, not Bliss's crony Nia Jax, nor Ronnie's faux horsewoman Shayna Baszler. Damn. Nothing can stop the man from becoming the man with the bank. I like it. I'm not, not great with names and taglines. You should have said uh, the man with the money. The man with the money makes more sense. Sounds so much better. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> First LLC and now the man of the ah. <laughs> ah, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? Okay, let's keep moving along. Uh, next up is a singles action. Liv Morgan taking on Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair gets the win over Liv Morgan. I like it. I like it. Push Bianca Belair. She's great. Uh, next up, we got a little video package. Rhea Ripley is coming to Raw. Love it. Yeah, just, you know, some cool NXT highlights. Oh, yeah. And next up, we have a men's Money in the Bank qualifying match. This match taking place between Daniel Bryan and The Miz. Ooh. Ooh. And Daniel Bryan, Ooh. Daniel Bryan, in fact, picks up the victory over The Miz. Daniel Bryan, uh, you know, he's heading to Money in the Bank. The, pay- the pay-per-view match given away for free right there. I know. Former, former, uh, former rivals. A pay per view match <laughs> that I'm just giving on free TV. I'm insane. Wild. <laughs> uh, after this match, as Miz is getting up, John Morrison, the Intercontinental Champion, John Morrison comes on the screen. He says to Miz, "Look at what eight years has done to us, Miz. We were on top of the world before I left, and now look at you. You haven't won a match in months. Your formal rival just crushed you." Uh, when I came back to WWE, I came back expecting greatness from you, which is why I teamed with you, Miz, because you were great. Now you are a shell of a form- of your former self. If you want this baby back, and he motions towards the IC title, uh, you have to come over to Slamtown and find out what royalty actually looks like. I'm better than you, Miz, by a country mile. There's nothing you can do, nothing you can or will do to make up for your lack of skill. So that's right, Miz, that's right. Miz and Morrison, hey, hey, ho, ho, no mo. <laughs> Incredible. I don't know why, but Slamtown <laughs> just really got me. <laughs> hey, he's the mayor of Slamtown. I mean, that's just that's just what he, what he is. He was elected. Um, you know, maybe maybe the storyline is that if Miz can't be the IC champion, maybe he'll out-elect him as mayor of Slamtown. Maybe, Incredible. You know, maybe November's coming up around the corner, baby. Let's just ease it around the corner. Remember, remember to vote for your mayor of Slamtown. <laughs> this episode is not brought to you by the mayor of Slamtown. No. <laughs> new, new WWE weekly show, Thursday nights, WWE sl- Slamtown. And it's just like debates. It's just live <laughs> debates. About who wants to be mayor, the new mayor of Slamtown. Oh, my God. You know how, like, sometimes on Reddit people do, like, um, like the like the title victories or something? Like, you know... The the hi- not hierarchy the history of titles of stuff so like who was 
Um, Are we just going to get one that's just who was mayor of Slamtown? Yeah, that's what I'm asking for. I said, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a thing. I was like, who was the mayor of Slamtown? So if, if he said he was mayor of Slamtown in like 2015 or whatever, and then someone beat John Morrison, let's just go they down the They become the, the mayor of Slamtown? Yes, they, they become the mayor of Slamtown. Let's just go down the list to see who is the current mayor of Slamtown. That's what I want. The way he decided the mayor of Slamtown is through combat. Yeah, how? I mean, it's slamming. <laughs> Sla- I mean, it's <laughs> slamming. Um, next up, a uh, segment Edge comes out thanking everybody uh, for WrestleMania to living to his living not to living to his uh, thanking everybody to live his dream of coming back into this ring uh, that he loves and having a match at WrestleMania that he that only he that not all fuck my writing is awful that not only he competed in but he competed in a hundred percent and won so you know big big crowd and roaring about like yeah edge is back and he's here and mm-hmm. he's gonna stay and edge says that he's gonna stay and whatnot and then Heck yeah and then the disciples come out seth rollins and murphy come out and they, they're shitting on Edge, you know, they, Rollins, and there's a little bit of a face-to-face between Rollins and Edge. Um, Interesting. You know, Rollins bringing up their past history and whatnot. Then Murphy attacks Edge from behind. Whoa. And then Rollins, of course, joins in. Someone's got to make that save. So who makes the save? None other than the debuting War Raiders make their whoa, debut whoa, whoa, and run out whoa. to save Edge. They're Viking compatriot. I love it. Yes, yeah, so there we go. I love it. He's, we're Vikings. You played a Viking on TV. We're Ooh, one in the we're same, one in the buddy. Same, baby. We're one in the same, baby. Um, yes. So, War Raiders have come to save Edge. And uh, Ron was an Edge. A little bit of tease. A little bit of tease, baby. And your main event, Mikey. Roman Reigns, Keith Lee. Like I said earlier, Roman Reigns has basically said that if Keith Lee beats him, you know, he's getting a WWE title shot. Yep. So what happens? Keith Lee wins. Whoa! <laughs> Huge victory. For whoa, Keith whoa, Lee. whoa! Roman Reigns' first challenge. First challenge. Roman Reigns. Keith Lee defeats Roman Reigns, and the two celebrate. You know, after the match, you know, Roman raises Keith Lee's hand, and you know they shake their hands and whatnot. Keith Lee leaves. Roman's still in the ring. Uh, but what's that? You look. You're watching Monday Night Raw, and you're like, "Well, hold on. Why are we? The match just ended. And there's five minutes left on the clock." <laughs> What the heck? There's five minutes left of the clock. What's that? What music do I hear? No chance in hell. Vince McMahon oh, walks no. to the ring. Smiling oh, no. big. He goes up to Roman and says, Welcome to Raw, you son of a bitch. Then Whoa. Brock Lenzer attacks Roman from behind. What? And Heyman comes up, shakes Vince's hand. Brock gives Roman two F5s. Then Vince leans over and tells Roman... Good luck defending your championship, Roman. The bell rings. New main event. What? Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship. What the hell is going on? One F5 later, Brock Lesnar wins. He is the new WWE Champion. Whoa. I'm coming out swinging. <laughs> Roman couldn't even have it for a night. <laughs> I'm coming Holy out swinging, crap. baby. Roman couldn't even keep it after the Raw, the Raw after Mania. No, yeah, I'm coming out swinging, Mikey. Wow, that's wild. I was not. That was a lot of a lot of things just happened. Yeah. <laughs> Tell uh, me that. Tell me. <laughs> What's going through your brain? That's uh, okay. I like. I like that. I, I think this is how you're getting to. The, the the Roman versus corporate idea that we discussed, mm-hmm. but I like the replacement of Goldberg with Brock. Yes, yes. I'm not. I'm not I am. Get I am. <laughs> hes- I'm not gonna lie. Roman versus Brock again makes me a little hesitant. Mm, it's fair. <laughs> so I'm gonna be going into this a little skeptical. So I'm gonna need you to convince me that it's good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do my best to try to convince you because I just I just fucking pulled a fast one. <laughs> yeah, uh, Vince McMahon was not happy that Roman Roman one upped him, so he he got payback. I knew that like Vince McMahon was not going to 
you know, take. He wasn't going to take it lying down. Yeah, no shot. We learned no chance. Vincent, no man. chance, if you will. No. And if it, was there a location to where that no chance will be taking place? No chance. In at no chance at Shell at the gas station. <laughs> wow, um, <laughs> that's great. Um, no chance at the Bell. Oh, the Taco Bell. oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Speaking of, while this episode's coming out, um, Mike, I'm going to tell this to you. Do you have you? You have the Taco Bell app, surely, right? Yeah. Have you? I say I say stare at all the Taco Bell cups in my room. I see, I think, two on the background behind you. <laughs> and there's three you showed in camera. Um, do you get your Taco Bell notifications? <laughs> like a responsible Taco Bell <laughs> customer? <laughs> Sometimes. Why? What's up? So the past two weeks, and I feel like it's going to be continuing, Taco Bell, every Tuesday for the past two weeks, have given away, you know, you can order online or through the drive-thru. They, you just have to ask for it. A free mm. one free Doritos Locos Taco. Yes. Have you have you been the smart Taco Bell customer and have taken apart this deal? I have not because I work on Tuesdays. Oh, it's all day, baby. All you gotta do is go I to know. Taco Bell. I know. I I'm I t- just I what do you think I, I've I had work... for lunch for the past two weeks on Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> my my bowels are awful. Yeah, I uh... I'm saying I'm going to stop by after work, but then I never do, and I always forget, and then I am upset about it. But to be fair, I don't eat the Doritos Locos tacos anyway, so like I'm not – don't feel like I'm missing out that much because they're like fine. I used to think they were the greatest thing in the world, but like now they're like fine. Um, they – so I had – And if I'm going to get one – what what time out. What flavor? Uh, I didn't – when I when I ordered through the app, I didn't get the choice to choose my flavor. It was nacho cheese. Is what the like? Okay, made. well, well, if you had the choice, I would. Well, I would probably would have cho- chosen the Cool Ranch first because right. Okay, good. The Cool Ranch is easily superior. I would take your word for it. <laughs> I one hundred percent take your word for it. They're probably doing this deal because they have so many Doritos Locos <laughs> nacho cheese flavors lying around. What am I going to do with all these nacho yeah, cheese? Not because who wants nacho? When the Cool Ranch ones are just so much better as a taco shell. Well, in Taco Bell's defense, it's bad marketing because they're basically telling everybody that it's nacho cheese. I guess do you like that. You not? I I know. Like I I was gonna. That's why I was silent for a little bit because I was debating or whether or not it was worth acknowledging. That's fair. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, uh, I have taken advantage, and Mike should be saying, Mikey, I have never. Last Tuesday, I never had a Taco Bell nacho cheese Doritos Locos taco for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. So I ate it. <laughs> I would imagine. And it was fine, you know. It was fine. I, 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 my girlfriend liked it a lot more than me. And my, my critical analysis of the Doritos Locos Nacho Cheese Flavor Taco is that it's the positives of the extra nacho cheese flavoring does not outweigh the negative of looking at my fingers and having Eating nacho fingers. cheese fingers. <laughs> I was like, yeah, That's, I was like this sucks. Not. I was like, I, I was like, it's basically just a normal hard shell taco at Taco Bell, but it's nacho cheese on it. So it's like, it basically tastes the same. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, man, I would love to, to see how the Cool Ranch tastes. I don't even, I don't even eat, you know what's funny? At Taco Bell, I never have, I never eat, ta- I never order any form of taco. Really? I only get tacos. Always, I always go, ch- always go Chalupa. Always Chalupa? It's like taco fillings, but the shell is a million times better than just a plain old regular taco shell. It's got that nice puffy fried dough taco shell that's just so much it adds so much more than mm-hmm. just a taco. Yeah, I always go with chalupa instead of a taco. Chalupas are the best. Chalupas are the way to go. Easy. And I get a lot of burritos. I get a lot of wraps. Like I like the, the loaded potato griller. That's the shit. Quesarito, uh, I'm in. Yeah, I I usually just get normal tacos, and for the past couple times, I've actually dabbled in adding sauce to my tacos. So you know, I'm ah, I'm, I'm getting expanding. bold. I see. <laughs> well, I'm getting medium. I'm getting mild into medium. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently at medium, and I think that's where I'm sitting right now. I'm, I don't use sauce. I think I don't. I don't need it. I I thought about it. I went to I went to Del Taco, which is a d- different taco chain here in the South, mm. which is much better than the one, Taco Bell. You know, you know the one with free shavaka do. Sure, um, it's, it's a vine. Sure, <laughs> it's it's way better than Taco Bell, but it's like way out in Tucker, which is like you know, like it's like thirty minutes from our house. 
Yikes. So, yeah. So, well, maybe not 30 minutes. Nothing's for 30 minutes from our house. It's like 15 minutes away. But it's like, why go to Taco Bell's like down the road, essentially. Yeah. So I'm sort of like, oh, man, do I eat shitty Taco Bell or do we get a little bit better? I, I, have, this, I have the same feeling. There's this one taco place that me and my friend keep saying we're going to try. But Taco Bell's like around the corner from my house. So. <laughs> I, I love that we're having this Taco Bell conversation, Mikey, but it also feels weird having this conversation knowing that everyone's getting fired right behind us in the background. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just I, – I Damn did, it. I literally just I, – I, I went, on, I went I back just, on Twitter. I, Bell, I went back on Twitter. Not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had Taco Bell two days ago, and now you're making me want Taco Bell again. So good. I went, I had – okay. So two weeks ago, I had Taco Bell three times. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad, dude. <laughs> Now I want fucking Taco Bell. God damn it, Ryan. Yeah, well, that's that's Taco Bell for you. You never, you never like, want Taco you never, Bell unless someone I'm, starts ta- describing Taco Bell. And you're like, you never Taco want Taco Bell, and then all of a sudden, like, you never really want Taco Bell, and you never really care about Taco Bell, and then all of a sudden, there's just, it's just like, it hits you, you're like, damn, Taco Bell sounds good right now. Having Taco <laughs> Bell is what I believe wrestlers call having the itch. Where it's like, oh, I haven't wrestled in a while. Maybe I should go go wrestle again. Ooh, I haven't had a quesadilla in a while. You know, you know the the I bumps. Had the quesadilla in like a day. Yeah, you know the the bumps are gonna hurt. You know, you're getting you're you're getting a lot of physical labor, and 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 you know, and you you can decide whether or not I'm talking about wrestling or eating Taco Bell. <laughs> the bumps are gonna hurt, and it's got a lot of physical labor, and afterwards you just feel awful. But you have the itch. Like, you always like, want to go while, back. But like while you're while you're doing it, it's the best. <laughs> while you're in the moment, you you can feel it. You're it's in. just so it's great. It's the best thing ever. Oh my god. Anyways, talk about <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the one time I ate Taco Bell in an inebriated state, and it was the and and I was experiencing this quesarito I was eating. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I like took a huge bite and then I would just close my eyes and just be like, yeah, this rules. Wow. <laughs> it's just like slow. <laughs> my friends thought I was a fucking lunatic. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, so we have, so we have the cards. All, <laughs> we have all, the cards. All <laughs> no We're doing a wrestling. This, this is a wrestling show. This isn't the bell cast. No, this is although, this, although, <laughs> God, <laughs> right that right that <laughs> Oh no, uh, yeah. So thank you everybody for listening to this big episode. Like we said, if you liked Monday Night Raw, if you liked SmackDown, go to our Twitter at HitTheBookSpod. There is a poll that is on the top of our profile. Just vote in that poll. Just say which episode you liked more. If you liked my key, if you liked mine episode better uh, of Raw versus SmackDown, and like we said, you know the winner of that poll. Next week, we'll have the power of the randomizer. Oh, yeah. So, you know, big, big, meaty power in those buns. That's outside the bun. Uh, I was trying to get a Taco Bell. Big, meaty power in those shells. Ah, that works better. Uh, But, Mikey, you and I talked about it beforehand. These cards are Doritos Locos, if you know what I mean. (laughs) I don't don't think I actually know what you mean. Oh my god. Hey, yeah, so so go vote in those polls. <laughs> anyway, let's let's Baja Blaster this outro. Yes, please. Uh well we're not quite done yet. We can't forget. Uh you and I talked about it beforehand and we said, you know, are we gonna do no randomizer this week or are we gonna double down the randomizer? Um and like and like KFC, we're gonna double down. <laughs> that a- Best food puns, baby. Yeah. So we might have decided we're gonna do random so we're doing the randomizers on each other, right? So you're gonna roll the randomizer and that's what you're giving me. And I'm going to roll the randomizer, and that's what I'm giving you. Does that make sense, audience? Are you listening? Audience at home? Audi- yes! Audience? Oh, hey, hey, audience? On those, on those uh, earphones, are you listening? Yeah, get on those cans. On those cans? On the buds? Those, bu- those buds? Uh, All right, anyway, let's roll our randomizers. Let's let's fuck each other over on the first episode of both of our respective shows. Okay, well, uh, since you did SmackDown, I guess uh, you can roll the randomizer and hurt me first. Yeah, all right. I'm rolling the randomizer. Okay. So, Ryan, I have yours. Thank you. Thank you. Bestow unto me the good graces from up on high. Your randomizer roll comes out to a 2K outcome. Oh, interesting. (laughs) This is terrifying. (laughs) Roll a D whatever, and whatever match you roll has to be simulated on WWE 2K. Okay. Do, are you going to roll that D whatever for me? My D5? D5? Yes, I will roll a D5 for you right now. This is terrifying because I want all of these 
I want all of these to be permanent. I this is <laughs> I want all of these victories to happen. All right, I've rolled my d5. Yes. I got a 4. Roman Reigns versus Keith Lee has to be randomized. Interesting. <sighs> okay, it doesn't To be fair, to be fair, no matter what no matter way that match ends up going, mm-hmm. you can still get your ending out of it. True. True. My my ending is still happening. It's just a matter of yeah. Really, what that does is mess up my future booking potentially. Potentially, who would have thunk? Who would have thunk it? Um. Well, I guess. Um. You know, we'll we'll let's I'll we'll we'll have a two K outcome. So you know, go to our YouTube channel. Uh, hit the books pod on YouTube. I believe is what it says. Um. You know, it's somewhere. It's linked somewhere. Um, go there, go to our YouTube channel. There'd be a 2k outcome. Maybe by the time you hear this, maybe around the time you hear this, uh, Mm -hmm. it'll be, it'll be that match. It'll be Roman Reigns versus Keith Lee. I don't know the ending of that match yet. And none of us do. And I guess none of us do now. Uh, we'll find out, uh, later. So that'll be there. Um, and maybe we'll talk about it next week. Um, Ryan, I'm excited. We haven't had one of these in a while. No, we haven't. No, we have not. I miss commentating. I miss being a commentator. Yes. Let's let's get into it. Um, let me now roll the randomizer on you to see what's happening, bud. <clears throat> let's see what is going to happen for Mikey. Okay, Mikey might have a huge, huge decision for you. Assuming oh, no. I'm lo- there's loading. Oh, actually, I might be a huge decision for you. Oh, no. I rolled for you to give to you a title change. A title change a title already? Must, a title must change hands on your show. Ryan, I only have one title match. <laughs> I know, unless you're at swapping out a match to, to do a different match. Or oh, you're having I might mustache have to. Man. I, can't, I can't take it off of heavy machinery already. Good luck figuring it out. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, Mikey, my, this, now, Mikey, keep in mind, this may improve or hurt your chances in the polls. You got to think about the polls. I think, okay, I think if it's anything, it's got to be the United States title. Who is it? Who is it? Humberto? Humberto Carrillo is my United States champion. Okay. How do we get to this match though? What happens? Do we just have a title match? Do I just have it? Oh my god. Okay. What are you what are you what are you looking at? What are you thinking? I'm replacing Jeff Hardy with Humberto Carrillo, and my new United States champion is gonna be Samojo. Whoa shit. Okay, and then that sort of also works, because you gotta heal he's like calling out people. I need to fix this promo, but that's fine. Yeah, just slight adjustment of the promo. So just so everybody knows, on my card, I had Samoa Joe versus Jeff Hardy with Samoa Joe winning. But now that we need a title change, I am replacing Jeff Hardy with Humberto Carrillo, our United States champion. And Samoa Joe is going to get the win uh, and cut a promo that I have not written yet. Is but The promo sounds like it's going to be largely the same, if I remember correctly. Yep. Okay. So due to Ryan's randomizer role... I have changed Samoa Joe versus Jeff Hardy to Samoa Joe versus Humberto Carrillo for the United States Championship in which Samoa Joe gets the victory. Afterwards, Joe cuts a promo saying he's here to run down the roster of SmackDown that nothing and no one will get in his way. Not even the former United States champion can stop me. Now that I'm the champion, things are going to change around here. And this... The title I love that is he just chose the beginning to do the U.S. title and have Samoa Joe win because I don't know if you remember and I don't and I don't know why I remember, but if I do remember correctly, it was at the Royal Rumble. <laughs> I can look it up, but I believe it's at the Royal Rumble in our universe where Humberto Carrillo beat Samoa Joe to win the United States Championship, and and now Samoa Joe has won it oh, back. Really? And I don't know if you remember that. It doesn't I don't I but I don't I don't know why but I, that detail sticks out in my brain that oh Samoa Joe listen he he wanted vengeance he's, he's got that's it all, and he he's got it. it baby okay well that so that's that's new that's added that's an added bonus to your show I would say you get a nice little title change I get a WWE yeah, outcome that could that changes the result of Roman Reigns versus Keith Lee by the time you're watching this maybe that's already out if not you know subscribe to the YouTube channel and it'll come out shortly. 
Um, but yeah, that's it for this week's episode of Hit the Books. Again, a lot of shit's happening in the world right now. A lot of shit's happening in WWE. We'll do our best to like stay up to date and realist and you know realistic in the sense of what we do. Because obviously, we're not. We wanted to do. We talked about this way earlier. Like we wanted to you know make it realistic, but also like because of COVID and stuff, we don't want to mm-hmm. like not do stuff things. But we've already we've yeah. always been on top of like if someone gets cut from WWE, they're cut from our show. And all of what's happening in WWE right now is a bunch of people getting cut. So, you know, who the hell knows what's happening? Um, you know, it's it's sad and it sucks. It really sucks. There's a bunch of independent contractors that just lost out on jobs and now they have to find work. You know, they don't they don't have get paid. I don't know if they have I don't know if they're getting severance pay because they're not employees, they're independent contractors. So now they have to find ways to get paid in a market where no one's getting paid no one's working so this sucks this sucks right now um it, but we're here for them a, you know we understand what's there's all this stuff but um apparently there's there's word saying that all these people got a hefty payoff so that's good i i'm saying news that's like already known for like a lot of people um <laughs> uh, but this is gonna be a <clears throat> this is all in us this is, gonna be a long, this is all new to us Wednesday. yeah um for a lot of people um, and, we're, and we feel for them and we definitely feel for them so thank you everybody for listening to the show uh, to round out the episode like I said you can vote in the poll uh, on our twitter at hit the books pod again pin to the top you can vote on which episode of raw or smackdown you liked more Mikey's smackdown where the main event was heavy machinery versus mustache mountain or my smackdown where the main event was Roman Reigns versus Brock Lenzer uh, a lot of stuff that else has happened uh, and thank you for listening. But yeah, go vote in the poll, people. Um, definitely recommend it because you have the power. You have the power of the randomizer. You know who's you're going to give the randomizer to somebody. So uh, definitely use your power wisely. Uh, uh, you can also, like I said, power is in your hands. The randomizer is the in your hands. The power. What is it? The people power. <laughs> people power. Power. Call power. Up John Lord notice. We the people. Wait. Um, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go. Obviously, we have YouTube versions of all these shows coming out now, um, uh, mm-hmm. and you can go uh, go there to watch the audio, I guess. But also go and watch the 2K outcome. We haven't done one in a while. We definitely yeah. love doing them. So go check that out when you can. Uh, Mike, any plugs? Get out of the way. Uh, well, tomorrow is a new episode of Mikey's Indy 500, where I'll be watching. Where I'll be continuing my journey. Uh, of 500 independent wrestling matches in the year 2020, uh, and I'll be reviewing another 10 matches. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the reasons why like we're doing some different stuff in season three is that we've we've moved. I'm not sure if anyone saw it on their end, but we did move um, publishers, um, audio publishers from Audio Boom to Red Circle. Um, you know, we, we mm-hmm. felt that was a good idea, especially with the changing times and money and whatnot. Um, but what's really nice about Red Circle is that if you so choose, we're not going to you know push it too much. But if you so choose, you people can also like donate to Red Circle. So if you literally just go to, um, let me see if I can get the actual feed. If you go, there, there should be a link in the bottom of the description of this episode. But if you go there and you click on that link, it'll take you to the Red Circle page. And there's a little thing that says sponsor this podcast. You can sponsor us. Uh, basically, you can you know set up a reoccurring donation or a one-time donation. We're not like big pushing it. You know, we're basically doing this show for fun. But if you're so willing to do that, um, especially with everything that's happening in the world right now. I mean, Mikey's a grocery store attendant and I'm <laughs> working at a coffee shop. Which is weird that I'm essential compared We're to you. We're both watching the world yeah, it's burn. Weird that, it's weird that I'm essential, but I guess people need their coffee. Um, because if, if nobody had their coffee, how, how would anyone talk to each other? This is true. We can't talk to each other until we've had our coffee. Oh, interesting theory. I like it. Um, but yes, so you know that's that's all happening um, in the real world. Uh, yeah, we you know if you do decide to donate, we would greatly appreciate it. But of course, you know it's, it's going to be there. It's going to be at the bottom of the description. We'll talk about it. So again, thank you everybody for listening. Again, vote in the polls at Hit the Books Pod. Um, stay safe out there, everybody. We really love you, Mikey. It's season three. Are we? Are you sticking the same out? Uh, same uh, fucking outro. Uh, I would say so. I don't well, see then why not. fine. Then all you know what, audience, screw you. I've got two words for you. Book it.